This video will be introducing you to the topic of spreads. If you have been programming before, you might have come across the concept of a list or an array, which is some kind of a container that can contain multiple values. In VL, these are referred to as spreads. They can contain any other data type, can be generated by hand or automatically with so-called spread generators, and are usually iterated over with loops. The outcome of this part is going to be this random distribution of spheres in 3D space, in which every second the rotating box from the last video is moving to the position of another sphere. To demonstrate the necessity of using spreads, we should try to render more than a single sphere in Stripe. So let's build the same rendering pipeline like in the last video. We need a scene window and a root scene. Set the window to a background color and enable a directional light. Create a sphere and a PBR material. And transform the entity with a transform SRT node. Now, if we want to display another sphere, we can simply copy the sphere and its transformation, send both into a group and set another position, And this is also possible for a third or a fourth object, but at some point things get messy. What you could also do is rendering multiple spheres within a loop in which different vector 3 positions are applied to the transformation of the individual spheres. To create a spread manually, we can use the cons node. It collects the values of a certain data type and returns the spread with the entries. For a start, we create two floats on the input of the cons, expose the spread on the output pin, and can see all slices that are inside the spread. The cons node has a pin group, so we can extend the input pins by pressing Ctrl plus and send more I.O. boxes into it. While the whole container on the output is called spread, one entry of a spread is called slice. And the I.O. box of the spread also tells us how many slices the spread already contains. As the cons node is adaptive, we can also use it to create a spread of integers, of colors, of strings. Basically any data type that you find in VVVV can be turned into a spread. To continue with the example we already started with, we will need a spread of a few vector 3 positions, which we just set to different values for now. So at this point we have a spread of vector 3 positions and a single sphere with the vector 3 position exposed and we need a way to create a sphere for each slice of the spread that we just created. This is your entry point into loops in VL as we cannot make a direct connection from the output of the spread into the transform SRT which by the way you would have expected if you have been using VVVV beta in the past two decades. But these days we are programming in VVVV gamma and you have to explicitly loop over lists of values. For this purpose, we're going to use a so-called region called foreach, which does exactly what we need here. When we start a link on a spread, we can connect the foreach region via two bars, of which the upper one is called splicer and the lower one accumulator. We can ignore the accumulator for now and focus on the splicer. This is the one that we use to enter the loop. It is displayed as some kind of a cone, visualizing that the big amount of data is coming in and separated into single entries for each iteration of the loop. On the output, we use another splicer to collect the data and leave the region which will return a spread on the output of the region. Just as a simple example, let's use a plus operation inside the for each to add another vector of one to each slice of the spread. Afterwards, we can expose the updated spread on the output of the region and see that the plus node did its job. Literally spoken, for each slice in the spread that we send into the region, the content will be executed and we can collect the updated result of the operation on the output splicer. In order to put the nodes that we want to loop over into a for each region, we can hold space while moving them into the region or use a more convenient way, which is selecting all nodes, opening the context menu with a right click and surrounding them with a for each. Afterwards, we can enter the region from the spread in which we combined the vector three positions via a splicer and connect to the translation pin inside the loop. 
To finally show the spheres in the renderer, we have to leave the region again using an output splicer, which collects the entities in a spread of entities. And because it is not possible to connect the spread of entities, but only single entities, we need to use the group spectral node. This one groups a spread of incoming entities into a single one that we can finally connect to the root scene. You can now set the positions for all spheres with the I.O. boxes and create as many spheres as you want by simply extending the inputs of the cons node. In the end, we have created a loop that is driven by a spread of incoming values, executing the same piece of code with a different input value for each iteration, and collected the result in the new spread which we can then group into a single entity to be rendered. Besides creating a spread manually, there are also quite a few nodes in VVVV that you can use to generate spreads automatically using spread generators. For example, the circle spread, the grid spread, linear spread or star spread. Covering all of these and their use cases in the course of this video would be a total overkill and I would like to focus on the random spread which comes in several versions for 1D, 2D, 3D and 4D. All of these have in common that they create a spread of random values with a given center and size. With the count input, you can specify how many values the spread should return on the output. So for example, when we create a one-dimensional random spread, set it to the width of 2 and to the count of 10, we can generate a spread of 10 floats with random values in the range between minus 1 and 1, because the center is set to 0. If we set the center to, for example, 5, the random values range from 4 to 6. And if we now set the width to 10, we get random values between 0 and 10, and so on. The same logic applies to the three-dimensional version of the random spread. If we connect the output of it to the for each, we can use it to really simply generate a random distribution of spheres in 3D space. Like the cons node that we set up before, it also returns a spread of vector 3 on its output with the difference that this one is not created manually, but generated with the three-dimensional version of the random spread. We can use the inputs for center and width to control the values and also change the seed of the random spread to another number to generate a different value set. Please give this some time to sink in. What is important to understand that the pipeline we have set up is simply driven by data of a certain type that you can handle with the same flexibility like if you were using only one value. In this case, the random spread is used to automatically generate this data and we are simply using single slices of vector 3 positions inside the loop. So when dealing with individual slices of a spread inside of a for each, the same programming logic can be applied to them like anywhere else in VVVV. In the next step, we're going to render again the box from the last video. Remember that the group spectral that we implemented before has the purpose of converting a spread of entities into a single entity. So if we want to display now another entity, we have to group it with the output of the group spectral. We should also set a PBR material with a nice color and make the spheres transparent. Transform the box with a translate SRT node. Enable the automatic rotation with an LFO and a vector 3 join. And expose the IO box for the translation. In order to set it automatically to the position of one of all the randomly distributed spheres, we need a way to get a single slice of the spread. For this purpose, you need to use a node called getSlice, in which you can send the spread and specify the index of the slice that you want to extract. On the output, the getSlice will return the single entry of the spread, which can be sent into the translation of the box. You can now see the box jumping around in the scene when you set the index to different values. And exactly like we did in the last video, you can insert a filter node after the get slice to smoothly transition to the new value.
Also note that the get slice is cycling through the spread on the input. So if the index pin is set to a higher value than the total number of entries, it will start again from the beginning of the spread. Finally, we want to make the box travel from sphere to sphere. So we need a way to automatically count up a number, which we will then send into the get slice node. We could work with the cycles output of an LFO which tells us how many times it has already been running, but in preparation for the next video we will need a way to count up a value with a distinct trigger. For this purpose you can use a counter node which has two boolean inputs that you can trigger with a bank to count the returned value up and down. For now, we simply connect the input pin that is counting up to the unused cycle output of the LFO, which will make the box animate from one sphere to the next. I hope I managed to introduce you on this very basic level to the world of spreads and loops and how to use them to render a multitude of entities in your scene. Please save this document as we will be extending it in the next video bringing interaction into our patch by using the mouse and the keyboard to trigger the animation of the box.